so it's just now you've got a little bit of tyre noise and just the sound of a 1953 car bundling through London traffic. We're driving along in second, I want to get a bit more speed, so I'm just changing to fourth. So I put my clutch in over into fourth, and now we're driving along here. The gearbox noise completely disappears, um, and it gives us a little bit more uh, low end torque if we want to pick up pace a bit. In the UK, we've got, I think, 37 million cars um, on the road. Uh, I think there are over a billion cars in the world on the road. Um, and I don't think anyone's of any doubt now that we are moving to a decarbonized uh, society, um, which begs the question, what is going to happen to all those cars? Are we literally going to scrap 37 million cars? Uh, and to me, that's un it's just uh, untenable. Um, you know, uh, where are they all going to be scrapped to? Um, and, and more importantly, why? why? Why scrap them when there isn't actually anything wrong with them except for the powertrain? I mean, I get regular emails, which is I drive around in a Mercedes 500 SL. I love the car, but I'm horribly aware of how uh, polluting it is. Um, and I, I, you just need to drive down. It, well, the 500 SL is a great example because it's a convertible car. You try driving through central London in that, and it's like living in a little s smoke cloud. I mean, it, it's not a pleasant experience, unfortunately. People buy cars first and foremost with their eyes. The first time they see a car is, is you know, they're, they're seeing it. They're not looking at the engine bay or, you know, they're not experience, you know. Yeah, they might read the 0 to 60 figures and go, wouldn't it be wonderful to do 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds? Um, but uh, the first thing that happens is they see a car on the road. Uh, and yes, if you're not going to make a visually appealing car, you're setting a hurdle for yourself right off the bat. Um, and so one of the things we're able to do with car conversions is we're able to take cars that people already have an emotional attachment to, cars that people have already identified as being appealing, um, and convert those so that when someone sees this car driving down the road, they don't know it's electric. Um, they just see a really cool car. There's a lot of air to go through the... Um Thank you.
I mean, pretty much done that, right? We've been overwhelmed with inquiries for about the last year, um, but, and, and that's just increasing. Um, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, we just need to go out driving in one of our cars and people pull up alongside us and be like, oh my God, is that really electric? Um, and oh, it's amazing, and how can I do the same thing? Um, we have a problem that it's still expensive. Um, our base conversion costs are around 20 grand, and that really is, is not what I would call affordable. Um, and our goal is to offer affordable conversions. We know that transport is the main offender when it comes to air pollution and we need to make sure that we're getting dirty diesel vehicles off our road, the most polluting vehicles off our road. Um, so we welcome the ultra low emission zone which has, is a really good first step. What we need to see now is the Mayor extend the ultra low emission zone to the whole of Greater London covering all vehicles so that all Londoners can feel its benefits.